Hello everyone and welcome to the second video of the Mixing Decision series. In this session I will talk about the track that we're gonna work on. This band is called Ves, it's my first rock band that we produced in the original location of Fuse Room Studio in Firenze, Toscana, and I'm particularly attached to this song and this album because it was what kick-started the band and the studio itself to work and get more jobs. The reason for this is that once we produced this record, labels and producers came to us and we got a record deal from an indie rock label. So most of the guys I would play with were high school friends or teacher colleagues of mine. We would teach you know, in, together in music schools in Firenze. And you know how it is with recording studios. The hype is there. They say, oh, they, they did something at that studio. They got a record deal. We have to go there. So I'm really grateful for the work we had done because this is what made my studio work and that's how it all started, I could say. So it was a living quarter of around 60 square meters. We had built a soundproof box in there, but we had found out that if you kept the door open and put some room mics in the living quarters area and in these huge ceilings, common space, the room sound would be great. The problem was neighbors, but luckily nobody complained, so the record got out anyway and we were able to work. So thank you, thank you neighbors for being so kind and letting us rock the drums with the doors open. So we'll run through what I have here. I've cleaned some of the tracks you don't need to see. There's like additional guitars and stuff we won't need. So in general, what I've done is I've kept all of the tracks here and you'll see some of them are muted. There's just minimum effects. There's only three, four effects for the vocals and it's comprised of guitars, keys, bass, drums. Let's start from the drums and let's, you know, walk our way down. Uh, the first one is a kick mic. And as you can hear, this is pretty much um, one microphone. I think we used two. We didn't have enough converters to capture all of the mics, so I think we blended something with the preamps, with internal mixers. We had a membrane mic, and then this is a Beta 52. Then the snare top and bottom are simple as, as simple as a SM57. So here it is. Now they are only trimmed and there's a little bit of a transient designer here. The reason for this is that we were young and wild, so there's some compressor setting that you will hear without the transient designer. It's not terribly different, but the problem becomes that we went a little bit weird with the release time, so there's not enough tail for this. Then I have two tracks that I commonly use in my template. One is called the Snare Splash Parallel. Sounds like this. And it's a combination of an L1 limiter, SSL channel. This time I've used the waves. It doesn't serve our purpose of um, shooting these out. This is just a sort of a parallel chain. It goes into an 1176, then goes into a LX480. So a lexicon emulation, small room, love this. It's a stereo program, but then I panned it mono, dead center, and then I'm just scooping down the lows. And that's pretty much it. The second one is another parallel I would use and this is just to take some of the attack out and, you know, bars the sustain. So it sounds like this. All right, so going down, hi-hat. Octava, 0, 012, I think. Overheads. And here, just like with the kick mic, you can hear the booth sound. It was a little bit too small for a drum kit. The drummer had to take breaks to breathe. So you can tell a little bit of the resonances, but the room, the room guys, how cool is that? Who doesn't love this? Even the neighbors loved it. Then Rock Tom, um, I think this was Two 421s, very simple, and floor. As simple as that. Bass, Fender Precision, I think on the rooms we used Octava 
319, not sure. We borrowed them from the school. Bass. And this high school friend of mine, bass player, was on a kick with uh, big muffs and stuff. So we also have this kind of sound. Then guitars. I think this is a Mesa head with just a single 1x12 uh, greenback, probably. And then chorus guitars. More guitars. More guitars. And more guitars. Great soul. Then there's keyboards. This is me playing. Then there's, uh, this is probably all a moog little fatty I had at the time. Then more. And then the signature synth track for this song, which I love. Who doesn't love that, right? It's amazing. I remember when playing it live, that line was just, ah, so good. This might be um, a Nord Leap 2, not sure. It might be the Little Fatty again. And... This is a chorus synth stereo, the only stereo track I have. I believe this might be Nord Stage. I'm not sure. Then vocals. Vocals were probably an octava. Volo oltre un margine per cercare dove sei. Great vocalist, great singer. Love to work with him. It was super fun. The whole band was fun. Then we disbanded because everybody had different projects, as usually as it happens. So. Um, you heard there's a little bit of effects on these vocals already. There's what I call Wendy's, because why wouldn't you call this track Wendy's? This is, <laughs> it's the most beautiful name you could give to a tra audio track, because this is Wendy Carlos' own 140 um, EMT plate in Altiverb. Then I have a UAD 140, can't live without this guy. And then we have Crystallizer and Echo Boy creating a sort of, uh, this is a chorus delayed effect, which is this. You heard this sort of reverse delay. And then there's a verse version, which I think we heard before. It's a sort of just a crystallizer. It's just very, very light to give it a sort of bounce. It's not a slap, it's a more modern way of doing it. So, now we go to my mix bus. Uh, why do I have stuff on the mix bus? This is gonna be controversial, so I'm expecting, you know, people to say like, oh my god, oh my god, what's going on? Well, I never mix in the box. I 99% mix in a hybrid situation. So I have outboard and I have plugins. When I do mix in the box, I really miss the fact that the analog outboard, it's not about being better or worse. It just creates a sort of gluing thing that I'm used to. So I need the clean digital um, factors to go away as much as I can. So I built sort of my own mix bus. It just shifts from time to time. There's a Shadow Hills mastering compressor. There's an FG Red. There's a K, K stereo plug. There's a Precision EQ in place of, I called it Fuse EQ Startup because I have a custom made here uh, equalizer called Fuse EQ, Fuse Room Equalizer. And this is sort of the closest that I can use to emulate the sort of clean lift from lows, highs, and just a little bit of uh, high mids. I'm not using the low mids band. Then there's two very old plugs that were used in this record. Uh, we tracked everything with the DG96 or something like that, so super clean microphones into normal preamps, like nothing super fancy, into converters. When you go that way, you don't have enough iron intake for your takes to survive. 
This is at least my belief. There's not enough iron to make tracks interesting. That's why the old records sound so good. And musicianship. Don't underestimate that. But technically, it's the iron. It's the mass that just adds to the sound. So these two plugs are a tube valve. It's called valve. It's a tube emulator and a tape emulator. They're very old, I would say. Very ugly, maybe, compared to the newer versions. But this what was what was used on the record. So I really like this and the combination of these two gives me a sort of, I would say, um, sort of like a 351 feeling. It just makes things bigger. So then I have a maximizer, which is a unity gain, just gives it a little bit more sound stage. And then finally a limiter, which is not pushing anything. It's just clean, clean through. On my master bus, which is like a master channel. I like to put some sort of console emulation and this will be common to all that we do. It's gonna be this Neve 88 RS and it's just a little bit of sort of algorithmic non-linearities. Hear how fancy this sounds. It's just so that things have a little bit more depth and this will stay on altogether. So these things will not change. We will gain stage through them to make sure we're not overloading or underloading them, but they will be common to the whole video series. So in theory, you should not care about what I do. This is gonna be exactly the same for all of the other videos. So the song itself sounds like this. We'll go through second verse, chorus, special part, and then end of the chorus. So enjoy and see you in the third, third video. And there you have it. See you in video number three. Ciao.